Hey y'all, hey, it's your girl Kai. I am the founder and owner of Bath Time Bakery, co-founder of Chem Collective. I'm your favorite cosmetic science student, and today we're going to be making these bodaciously beautiful emulsified sugar scrubs. Now I worked on this formulation to create something that doesn't settle, it doesn't get too hard the next day, you won't have oils floating on top, and it's going to perform very well and not leave behind sticky tub, okay? So go ahead and like this video, share, subscribe to this channel on YouTube, and also my social media platforms that are in the description. I've also made it a point to list everything that I've used and where you can find it should you be interested. And at some point, y'all, it's going to take me a minute, I will put this in the blog post at baptimebakery.com. All right, let's get into it. All right, so before we dive into making the sugar scrub, it's important to understand what we're making and how it works. So we are making emulsified sugar scrubs today, but what is an emulsifier? Emulsifiers are liquid or solid surfactants used to stabilize formulations by bringing liquids that don't normally mix, like oil and water, together. So one end of an emulsifier is attracted to water and the other end is attracted to lipids or oils and butters. And this attraction helps stabilize the formulation or emulsion and emulsions often result in creamy white texture. So think of lotions and body creams. Okay, so here is a visual of what's happening. You see the emulsifier, you see that the head, the red part, is attracted to water, and then the tail is attracted to oil. And that attraction is what binds these ingredients, like oil and water, together and keep them stable. An emulsified sugar scrub is then made with emulsifiers. These scrubs tend to have a creamy texture that basic sugar scrubs don't have, and they also rinse off white like lotion. All right, that was a quick breakdown. Let's get into it. We're starting off with emulsifying wax and acetyl alcohol. They take some time to melt, so we want to get them going while we work on the rest of the scrub. So I'm using less than 1% total of both of them because they tend to make formulations hard the following day, and ain't nobody got time for that right about now. And the reason why I am using them, though, is because they do help support the stabilization of the scrub. All right, so while the waxes are melting, we're going to move on to glycerin, and oh my gosh, we're going to be using glycerin for a couple of reasons. One, it helps bring moisture to the skin as it's a humectant. Two, it's a thick texture that enhances the formulation. And three, it's the medium we're going to be using to dissolve our next ingredient, which is xanthan gum. All right, so we're going to go ahead and add xanthan gum. Xanthan gum is a thickening agent, a gelling agent, a stabilizing agent, and more. And this is going to greatly enhance the texture of our scrub. So we want to do two things with gums. We want to dissolve it, and then we want to hydrate it, okay? So the glycerin is 95% glycerol, and xanthan gum can dissolve in glycerol. And so we want to go ahead and do that by mixing it until we don't see any clumps in the gum. Now, my stand, or excuse me, my scale isn't all that great in terms of measuring down to a tenth of a gram sometimes, and I really can't afford to screw up with xanthan gum. So my rule of thumb is 1 16th teaspoon xanthan gum for every 10 ounces of scrub that I'm making. All right, so we have dissolved all of the xanthan gum and the glycerin. There are no xanthan gum bits in it. Now what we want to do is we want to hydrate it, and the only way to do that is with water. So I'm adding distilled water to my glycerin and dissolved xanthan gum solution. And I'm going to stir, as you'll see later. And what's going to happen is as you stir, the solution will start to thicken as the gum is hydrated by the water. And so for any of you guys having trouble with xanthan gum, please know that if you use too much of the gum, or if you don't have enough water, you'll get bits of xanthan gum left behind, and there's just nothing you can do to dissolve that once you start getting those clumps so you don't have to worry about that with this and this formulation but if you're just trying to use it in your other stuff um, just an FYI so I'm going to be mixing it with my hand and not using a mixer um, like a handheld stick blender or that type of thing because maybe some people don't have that but if you have a stick blender this is the best way to incorporate or mix the solution because um, that really gets the xanthan gum mixed in well with the water and also hydrated. But as you can see here, I'm just spinning, um, <laughs> spinning, mixing as fast as I can. But over time, it's going to turn into what looks like a gel that you'll see shortly. 
All right, so if you just keep at it for a minute or two, it doesn't take too much longer before you get something like this. You see that thick kind of, well, not too thick, but it's gel-like texture, and it's great for helping suspend the sugar. And that's important because if it's suspended, then it's not going to sink. So now we're going to move on to shea butter, and it is hands down, y'all, my favorite butter. Shea butter just feels so rich on the skin. You can use it from head to toe. It has omega-3s and 6s. It's non-comedogenic, meaning it doesn't clog your pores. It has a long shelf life. It has hella antioxidants. Oh, my gosh. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous butter that moisturizes the hair and skin so you just know I have to use it right and so by the way granted I use I'm using unrefined shea butter in this um, scrub you won't detect its distinct smell near the end of the formulation okay you guys see how the shea butter is not mixing with the stuff below right that is why we need an emulsifier because it's gonna bring all of that together a little later whoopsie daisy so that beaker is full so i transferred all the contents into that pitcher and i'm just going to keep on filling up the beaker because it you know you guys can see things better but now we're going to go ahead and use avocado oil ladies and gentlemen i love avocado oil i love the way it feels on the skin and i love the way that it works in body oils and body creams it leaves a really really nice sheen to the skin without it feeling coated or weighed down and it has antioxidants like vitamin E in it, as well as the omega-3s. And really, it's just such a pleasant oil to use. All right, so this is polysorbate 80. At 7%, this is our primary emulsifier. So along with the emulsifying wax and the acetyl alcohol, the polysorbate 80 is going to emulsify the water in this formulation with the oils and butter and this emulsifier will also bind to the water that we use when rinsing off of the sugar scrub. Lastly, I probably should add that polysorbate 80 is, is a mild surfactant and it has really light cleansing abilities, which I quite like because I don't want one color and slip to be left behind in the tub or the shower. And you know, we don't want people to slip and we don't want to dirty their tubs. This is a classic, classic, classic watermelon lemonade fragrance, and this is from Lone Star Candle Supply Company. This fragrance smells exactly as you would expect. But keep in mind that not all of their fragrances are phthalate-free, so if that's something that's important to you, heads up. Um, but the good thing is that they clearly label which fragrances are phthalate-free and which ones are not, so kudos, mad kudos to transparency. Now I'm going to move on to my preservative is phenylpropanol EHG and it's a blend of phenylpropanol and ethylhexylglycerin and it provides broad spectrum protection meaning it's going to fight against bacteria mold and yeast which is what we want because those things love to thrive in water and we have water in our products and water is probably going to come in contact with our sugar scrub. So now I'm just going to add everything that was in the pitcher or in the beaker now into the pitcher okay and I'm going to mix it, you guys, just so you can see here, it's gonna start turning kind of like a milky white color. And that's a lot of the times that's what happens when you're emulsifying stuff. All right, so the emulsifying wax and the acetyl alcohol that we melted earlier, we're gonna go ahead and add that to the solution. But I made a mistake. You guys will see shortly that the solution that I'm adding it to in the picture is a little too cool. So immediately upon pouring it in, it started solidifying. The waxes started to solidify. So to rectify that, I threw everything, that whole pitcher I put in the microwave for about 15 seconds to melt the waxes and the acetyl alcohol into that so that I wouldn't have those clumps. Then I came back, as you can see, it's a lot more watery now because it's a little bit warmer. I came back and I just kind of mix it all together. We're going to pour it into the sugar. And just a word of advice, if you're going to be using stuff like microwaves or whatnot, for your products, get one exclusively for your business. Anyway, we're gonna be using white granulated sugar today. It is really, of course, the star ingredient. And the reason why I'm using it is because its size and texture are perfect for this formulation and it's going to suspend very nicely and it's easier to work with than I would say other sugar types that tend to be larger in size, like cane sugar, or I might say it wrong, turbinado sugar, um, and so on and so forth. All right, so you can skip the hand mixing part, but I don't know, I just like to do it. It's kind of like this oddly satisfying look to it. It even feels good when you're mixing the sugar and the emulsified oils and ingredients together. Um, but you guys, the secret, 
really in achieving the texture that you saw in the beginning of this video is by mixing with a handheld mixer, which you'll see me doing shortly. So have you made it in Hydra's body butters before or like the body butters with no water in it and how you whip it, you let it cool, you come back, you whip it some more. That's how I treat this sugar scrub. And part of the thing is the sugar scrub is a little warm because I made that faux pas earlier. You guys saw I had to actually warm up my liquid and butter mixture and then I added it to the sugar. So normally when I'm adding it, it's slightly cooler temperature and I won't have to let it cool and come back. But because this is warm, and you can see a little thin. I'm going to let it cool back, cool down a little bit after I'm done mixing it and come back. So you'll see, though, at the end of this first initial session of mixing that it starts to have that nice texture that we all quite like when you're scooping it up. And it's really beautiful aesthetically, especially for social media posts. So this is just to show you how the texture is coming along. And we're gonna do a little bit more to it to get that texture that you guys saw at the beginning of the video. But before we even dive into that, we're going to go ahead and add some color. So I'm going to split it, and then I'm going to color it with two different micas. The first mica I'm going to be using is called Flirt, or the first color, and it's called Flirt, and this is by Mad Micas, which I really quite like their company. Okay, loves, let's spend a moment talking about neon colors, okay? So as of late, I've noticed so many beautiful sugar scrub videos on social media platforms where people are using neon colors. Now, I don't know where they're home based, but if you are in the United States, neon colors are not approved by the FDA. And I'll go into a little bit why. So say you have a neon pink. The INCI might be polyester 3 and red 28 or polyurethane 11 and red 28. Okay, polyester 3 and polyurethane 11 are permitted cosmetic ingredients by the FDA. Red 28, not so much unless it is FDNC red 28, where you know then that it is batch certified, meaning it's approved by the FDA. Now, while those two individual ingredients are okay for use in cosmetic ingredients, some might have restrictions like manganese violet and ultramarines, but more or less you have two okay ingredients. When you put those two together though, to create a color, that is something entirely new and that needs to be reviewed, vetted and approved by the FDA, which neons have not been. That's why we don't use them in something like a sugar scrub, but you can in soaps. So I have a link for you guys um, in the description that'll help you vet your colorants. So now I'm gonna be using Yellow Vibrance Mica by Nurture Soap. And my rule of thumb is for every 10 ounces of sugar scrub base, I use one gram of colorin. I'm just eyeballing it here because um, I'm quite familiar with this recipe, but if you're looking for a rule of thumb, that might be something to help guide you. And if you're using one gram of colorant per 10 ounces, it's not going to diminish or reduce the percentage, the 0.7 percentage of the preservative that we've used. So now that we have our two sets of colors, I'm going to place both of them in a cool area and let them sit for about 30 to 45 minutes. And this is what it looks like now. And then this is what it looks like after it's cooled. So it's gotten just slightly thicker, which is great. So I'm gonna go ahead and whip it a little thinner before I add it back to the stainless steel bowl with the pink sugar scrub. But let me also show you what the pink sugar scrub looks like because it was in something a little bit wider and flatter that actually cooled off a lot more than the pink sugar scrub. Please don't do what I just did outside the bowl. I just made a mess for no reason. So pinky got a little too hard um, because I, I left it in a room that was about 34 degrees, pretty cold. And But you can just kind of whip it back into shape. I didn't want to wait for it to warm up to room temperature. So I went ahead and just did this, but you can see it's a lovely texture. Then I'm going to shimmy some of it over and add the yellow next to it. But now you guys can see that texture that we love, that we want, we're sort of adhering to itself. That's it. It's right there. So now I'm adding the yellow into the bowl and you can see by its thickness that the yellow is still cooler than the pink, right? And so I try to mix it up a little bit later and I ended up just making a mess. I should have just left it alone and let it just warm up to room temperature, but I, I admittedly I was being impatient. Okay. 
So this is the mess that I was referring to. You see the yellow splatter right there? But you guys, that's it. After I let it sit for another 10, 15 minutes, the yellow softened up. This is what it looks like. This is the temperature or the texture. And I must tell you, the average, and I'm going off memory, so I could be wrong now, but what I last looked up, the average temperature of people's bathrooms in the winter time in the United States is about 65 degrees. So if your product does very well in cooler temperatures, like this was stored somewhere, it was 34 degrees, um, it, it will do well in the winter time. It's also worth checking your sugar scrub formulation to see how it performs in warmer weather, right? Because if you're shipping it in summer, that could impact the formulation. Does it settle? Does it still stay suspended? If you want to keep it suspended, the beauty really truly lies in finding that right balance of emulsifiers and other ingredients that you're using. But the Xanthan gum definitely helps, but this is it. And just so you know, I've also done this where I've whipped sugar scrubs that look absolutely amazing in texture. And the next day it's rock solid. You cannot even push your finger all the way to the bottom, which is not what I want in a sugar scrub. I don't want my customers to break a nail or just spend a lot of time, you know, having to wait for the product to warm up because it's inconvenient. So I think this recipe is a great baseline for you guys who are interested in it. And I hope that you found the information I shared with you helpful. I am going to show you and try to mimic one of those really cute, like, you know, scoop videos that are so popular to see how this sugar scrub performs. And then I'm going to show you how it works with a brief demo shortly. Okay, okay, I'm just kidding. You know, this whole ASMR stuff makes me quite uncomfortable. <laughs> so here's what it looks like. The texture pretty much stays this way, you guys. It's, it's very, very beautiful. Easy to make sugar scrub. All right, so here's what it looks like. The sugar scrub, it spreads easily on the skin. It doesn't adhere to itself too much, so it's not a pain to distribute on the skin. Um, it's quite a bit amount of sugar, uh, great exfoliant feeling. And when I rinse it off, it doesn't turn as white as it could if I'd use like a lot more emulsifying wax, but it, but it does turn white when you rinse off and it leaves behind nice cleansed skin. All right, you guys, so that's it. Let me know what you think about this video. I hope you find it very helpful. What works for you? What doesn't work for you? Let me know. You guys take care. Bye. One last thing, hit me up at Chemist Collective on Instagram as well as Bath Time Bakery.